okay, hi, Lamar, how are you? This is the first time we've met. And so I thought yeah. I'd go from the very beginning. Yes, it's uh, wonderful to meet you. And uh, I have enjoyed so much uh, getting to know you uh, over the internet. And I'm now in Atlanta, Georgia, and you are in Taiwan. Yeah, we're on the opposite side of the world. Um, I made a few questions, but also after your, your most recent email was the most interesting one of all. And I made a, um, a, a few pointers. So I said, okay, if we go through with the questions, now feel sure. free to go in any direction you want. I don't want to control this. Well, I appreciate yeah. that, but I thought that uh, I thought that what uh, the questions that you had were very good, and uh, I want to uh, I want to listen as much as I talk today uh, because I think that that's a good thing to do, and uh, I'm glad to be here. So I'll uh, I'll just take your lead. Okay, so the first question. Let me see. I just what I said is what you said before. You're an artist in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a writer down in the middle part of Taiwan. And um, I wonder if you could say anything about he, how you and I got involved with each other. You're, yeah. you're, I'm, a writer, I'm a writer, you're an artist, you're on that side of the world, I'm on this one. And all of a sudden we became entangled, very intimately entangled, you might say. Yes, yes. And um, I, uh, I have been posting uh, abstract art on Facebook for a couple of years. And um, I uh, have, have uh, begun to quickly recognize um, a good writer when, um, uh, when I get comments that have uh, thoughtful and well-written um, words. And so um, I think that uh, you made one very short comment and I said, Bill, are you a writer? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you responded that uh, yes, you were, and uh, that you were uh, uh, completing your second book. Um, and I have read now both of your books, uh, and I've read Dr. Ullman's book, one of his books. So, uh, so we uh, we met that way, and then I was thrilled when. Um, you were able to use my abstract artworks as kind of a catalyst for uh, some writing that you did. And I went through all of those today from the very first one to the last one. And uh, it's really, really thrilling to me that uh, writing like uh, of this nature would be done about my work. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just very, very happy about it. I, I, I wrote a few notes on this. I didn't think of it until just now, just a few seconds before, because of your email, I just came up from making breakfast. And, and I, you know, I used to be a, um, I used to be a biologist, actually a plant taxonomist. I, my interest was orchids and, and the plants of the Caribbean islands where I grew up. And um, so when I was an undergraduate, I wasn't much interested in any of the stuff, so much of the stuff they were, they were teaching me. You, you said something about your, your academic career. You said you were at one of the big universities, Georgia Tech maybe, and you said- No, you, I was at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. I was, in, I was at Purdue in Purdue. Indiana, yeah. And you said you, you failed out of boredom. Well, Boy, I really uh, resonated with those I think words. There was a, a combination of boredom and Lamar having a little bit too good of a time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what those young years are for. Let's face it, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. My father. I was, having, I was having a very good time. I remember that. And uh, my friends tell me that uh, I was even having a better time than I remember. And uh, so uh, those are memorable days and uh, I uh, somehow got got back on track after I left Purdue the first time I went back and and changed from computer science to uh, graphic arts and and then when I uh, was when I graduated from Purdue I took my portfolio to Atlanta and um, got a job as a uh, as a designer uh, for a uh, for a printing company, 
and uh, but my I guess my heart wasn't really totally in it at the time because when they came to me and said Lamar if you'll if you'll run the press room as a manager we can pay you a little bit more <laughs> and I said okay and um, that started a 40-year career in printing management and uh, throughout that 40 years, I, uh, I enjoyed the work. Um, printing, of course, has a lot to do with color and there's a lot of uh, uh, measurements that need to be made. The, the machinery is uh, finely engineered and I was in kind of a golden age of um, the printing technology that I was involved in uh, went from uh, rubber stamp quality to four color process quality. And so I was uh, always surrounded by artwork and graphics and uh, from a management viewpoint. And I uh, continued to, uh, you know, I traveled, I was in charge of manufacturing and I also had, I was responsible for the largest customers. And so I traveled all over the country and half the world and always wanted to just go to museums when I, when I got somewhere, go see the customer and then go to a museum. So uh, that's what I did. And in the back of my mind, I always wanted to, uh, to do some uh, more regular artwork. And so a couple of years ago, uh, I posted something on, Facebook and uh, the founder of that particular group uh, gave me a, a very nice uh, comment and I have been posting something every day now for almost two years. Well, that's an amazing, amazing story. I just wanted to say something about, um, about why, what happened to me when I saw that piece of your art because I Please. I don't go on that page very often. I sometimes I post the work I do with dreams and nobody in that page is really interested in that. And they don't comment on it. Um, but I saw a painting of yours, a work of yours there on the page. And I just want to say why why it affected me and why all your works affect me the way they do. Thank because you. My, my background was as a as a as a botanist. And I used to work in the rainforest and discover new species of orchids and collect many different kinds of plants in all the different ecosystems, like in the Caribbean islands. And I would bring them back to the Duke University herbarium and under the dissecting scope, I would classify, I would, I would name, find out what the species of, were. I got very interested in plant classification. And it, what I learned, the most interesting thing I learned from doing all that, is that there are two kinds of classifications. There's what they call an artificial classification, which is the old, the old fashioned way they used to classify. These are trees, those are shrubs, those are blue flowers, those have yellow flowers, and all the yellow flowered plants. But that kind of classification doesn't yield any information. But the other kind of classification is, is what's called a natural system of classification. And this is the system put in by Carl Linnaeus, I think he's Swedish, I think he was in Uppsala, and he put in this system of classification with binomial, binomial nomenclature, you know, and um, the thing about this system is that everything fits because you consider all the characteristics of the flower, of the plant, every characteristic, you consider them all, and so it, it when you classify in that way, it reflects something deeper. It doesn't just reflect what we think. It reflects the process of natural evolution that's been happening over millions of years. It reflects, you might call it the unconsciousness of nature. And so it's authentic. And by that system, you can tell which things are more closely related to which others, and it, it bears it out. When you investigate more deeply, it bears it out. And um, Dream, when I got into dreams, I, I wasn't able, I didn't fail out, but I, I, I didn't get to do what I wanted to do in my life. I wanted to go to Harvard and study under this botanist named Richard Evan Schultes and Harvard didn't want me. I met Schultes, he invited me to Harvard, but I was offended by then, you know, stupid young people. And um, <laughs> I didn't go. And um, eventually I, I left it all behind. I got away from academia, I decided to be a writer. And I started working with dreams. Now, dreams are very much like biology. They're our biology. 
because, and this is where your work comes in, because like, like biological, like natural systems of classification with plants, in the dream, everything fits. Everything is taken into account. And if you look into it very deeply, you, you can, it can lead something, something deeper than, the, than your mind is controlling this dream. Just like in, with, with a plant or an animal, something deeper than, than that, that plant or that animal, that environment, something deeper is controlling the aspects something, of that animal. Something, genet something deeply genetic or something like that, Bill? It's, it's evolution. It's the unconscious yeah. process of nature, biological evolution. It's genetic and phenological, everything. It's everything. It's all together. Yeah. And this is the way dreams are too. So if you look into dreams, what you can do is you can find a story. Every dream, it has a connection. These different things that don't make sense because they're metaphors, they do connect. And when you follow the connection and connect it with the life of the person who had the dream, the person who had the dream discovers something about their life that they didn't know because the unconscious comes first and then it becomes conscious. And that's what we're doing with dreams. The moment I looked at your painting, something sprang to me, those words, just two or three words. And then you see you said something and then you posted another painting and then so a little each time you posted a painting more came up and finally i realized holy cow this is just like the dreams these are this i've seen abstract art i know people who do abstract art i've looked at it but your art is different because we, with your art is like a dream it reflects something deeper there's something there's, there's something at work there that that rises up from what some people would call the unconscious other people will call it god other people call it this and that we don't know what it is right you know all these right. fundamentalists think oh i know what the unconscious they don't know what it is you don't you can't how can you know it it knows us but we can't know it sort of exactly like what the mystics say about god it's not that different there's some another part of us your your art comes from that and i can tell and that's what really struck me um that's what struck me about your art. I mean, I, I've seen abstract art before. I know people that do it, like I said. Yeah. But it's not the same. I look into it, I see nothing. I look into one of your pieces, and they pull, <laughs> me, they pull me in. And so yeah, I was... You, 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 have definitely, you have demonstrated that you see a lot in there, uh, Bill, that, uh, that most people don't see. And not only are, do you see these things, but you are able to uh, create uh, stories, narratives, words uh, about them that uh, make them more interesting. Well, they're interesting themselves, by the way, the way they are. I mean, there's so much in your pieces. You look at a piece and you think, oh, this is just a repetition of the same form over and over again. And you look at it a few seconds and you start looking at it and you begin to notice, wait a minute, there's something <laughs> right here. The form is not repeating, it's changing. There's yes. something. This is, it's, I, I, when I was young, a long time ago, I was blown out of my chair by an article I read, a, a piece by Sigmund Freud. He was analyzing a statue of Moses. Ah. And what he did was interesting. He, he, he said that the statue is in movement. And then he told what the statue was doing and what it was going, it was Moses, I forgot what he was doing, but he was doing something. And Sigmund Freud looked into that and he, from, that, from the artwork, he told what was happening. And I never knew I was able to do that until when I, was, when I first founded the Dream Network and I was publishing this, this Dream Newsletter, Dream Network Bulletin, I came up, someone told me, hey, Bill, there's a, an exhibit of the Curico, let's go see it. And I went to see it and his images are like yours. There's something in them coming up. But with the Curico, it's a little bit different because he has a philosophy. He has some philosophy that I feel, maybe I'm wrong, he was, was, I think they call him a surrealist. So he was trying to put his philosophy into the art. You're different, yeah. you're like, your work is like a dream. Something is coming out of your work that you're not, you're not consciously putting there, it's coming out. And it's, it's beautiful, it's real, it's true. And I think in my, if, I, if it's like dreams, if I'm right, I may be wrong. I've only worked with five or six. I worked for a few weeks with your works. They grabbed me every day. And finally, I said, no, I, I've got to stop looking at these. I'm trying to finish <laughs> my third book. So I, I don't look at them now. I try to work on my book. But if I did work, look at them, they would keep grabbing me. And, yeah. Um, because there's something. Well, I think there. Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, wonderful for, for me to hear. And I, I think that... It, 
they they clearly grab some other people too too, but uh, the other people are n- not uh, able to write the way you do. So your your writing is a is a big part of them kind of coming together. Um, I uh, so there there's there's this sense of create creativity and dreams and um, inspiration and uh, in my case getting in involved in a piece and really uh, not consciously having any direction whatsoever it becomes then somewhat of a meditative state where I'm I'm not uh, seeking uh, an end result I'm just uh, along for a very nice ride. Well um I think what you say is so true. It, it, it's, it's, it's not this and it's not that. What it is, is the mystery of it. It's a mystery. In other words, you tap in your, in your artwork, you tap into the mystery. Now I come up with, with these writings, these, these, these are called projections. These are my projections. I'm putting myself into the work and saying what it would mean to me. That doesn't mean the work means that. Do you know what I mean? It may mean something yeah. different than you. It may mean the same, it may mean something different. The only one that can really tell what the work means is, is you, but I don't think that's what art is about. Art is about raising the mystery, letting other people be drawn into that deeper thing, whatever it is in, in themselves or in you, whatever. It, it's not about making a fetish of the artist. It's about producing pieces of magic that can draw us to the deeper state we need to be in, in order not to keep ruining the earth like we're doing, destroying the, the habitable yes. planet we have. Yes. Polluting people's minds with garbage, you know? Yes. That's what I, I see in your work. I, That's why I, I agree, trust you. I agree with you those philosophies for sure. And uh, I think that, um, you know, I, I just get, uh, get very uh, deeply involved in, in, in a piece and I lose, uh, sometimes I lose a little track of time. And I don't, uh, you know, I spend a couple hours a day on it, something like that. It's a, uh, uh, it's not something that I do uh, work uh, as hard at as you work at dreams. If you're teaching, you're teaching classes with students and uh, meeting a schedule and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, that's a that's a difficult thing, Bill. Well, and, I do the uh, same as you. I only work a couple of hours a day, whether it's on dreams or writing. I I, I am no great genius or prodigy, believe me. And I think all the I've I've looked into different writers, like people like Emerson. I'm sure that Ralph Waldo Emerson only worked a couple hours a day. And that's the way it works. How much do we have in us? You know, only a few hours can come out. Yeah. Well, uh, I read something today uh, about uh, the, one of the main barriers to create it, creativity is just being too busy, having something to do every minute. And uh, I was uh, um, unfortunately caught up in that while I was in my working career but now that I'm retired I have I have pretty much time to do anything I want to do and I'm, resist, I'm resisting the um, the efforts of uh, some family and friends to that you know don't don't waste any time uh, you must keep doing something all t- every minute and <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know, you know the, the, this uh, is Zen saying, it, it says, um, don't just do something, sit there. Yeah, there you, go. there you go. And that's the meditative stance. You Don't just do something, sit there. And the idea is, the idea, the Chinese idea, Wu Wei, it's like three, three, four thousand years old, that the doing of nothing allows things to happen of their own accord. In other words, a deeper agency moves into power and start acting. But I just wanted to to disagree with you on one point. I don't think you wasted your time being busy all those years. I feel, I I had a disagreement when I was at Duke. There was this, um, in my opinion, idiot professor who thought that I was stupid to focus so narrowly on what I was interested in while I was an undergraduate. I was supposed to absorb broadly and then focus later. And I really disagree with that view. I feel that every single human being we do not fit with this liberal, this broad liberal bullshit idea. Every single human being has a different way to get into their passion. And I figure that what you did all those years when you, you were going around the world and going to museums and working with these images and these machines, 
I think that is, gave your unconscious the straw that the horse needed to eat. You, you fed I, I, your I, unconscious I, I, what it needed in order for it to be able to do what it's doing now. I don't think it was a waste. No, I, I don't either. I think it, uh, that's a good insight. And, um, you know, I enjoyed those times and have good, good memories about them. Um, made a lot of good friends, played a lot of golf. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask you, Bill, that you know, I've read a good bit about you. And, uh, you know, I know that you went to Duke and uh, you were, you started in Cuba and South Florida and Puerto Rico and were into orchids and, and then uh, took a bus to Duke and uh, got a degree there and then went to Cambridge and well, got Columbia, a PhD. Columbia, not Cambridge. Columbia, Columbia and, uh, uh, and got a PhD. And, uh, and then at some point uh, decided that, what you were doing with that PhD was not what you wanted uh, people to do with it. And, and you struck off uh, into dreams, uh, dream study with uh, on your own and then with Dr. Ullman and uh, Zen meditation. Tell me, how do you do an all day meditation? Is that like an all day golf outing where? <laughs> Hold on. Um. Okay, I just want to, I want to, I have two things to say. I think, I'm not sure if I'm interviewing you or you're interviewing me, but I think we're having, and I think maybe we should have more of these conversations. We'll make a series of videos. I think there's something fruitful here. But I just want to talk about, about, I was a professor of biology at a place called Jersey City State College. I thought, I decided while I was getting my PhD, I had an experience. They, they, they pulled me down to Florida because they wanted to, um, I had to visit my draft board. And um, when I was down there, I was driving into a parking lot and this policeman arrested me because he said I was driving into the park. This is an empty parking lot at the time of day when there were no cars anywhere. He said I was driving in the out, the place where you're supposed to drive out of the parking uh -huh. lot. Yeah. And so he arrested me. He said, where's your license? And it turned out I, I was at the beach and I left the license in my pants at home. Yeah. And so he, he had me up against a car. He frisked me. All this police stuff you see happening now. And so he arrested me. He thought I was a hippie from up north. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, he was a redneck from down south. And so he was going to show me what he could do. And there I'm in the back of the, I'm going to get in the police car. And uh, my, my girlfriend was with me and she always read novels. I never read novels. I, I'm a scientist. I don't want to read stories that people are making up. <laughs> on, the, on the seat, there was this green paperback novel she was reading. I had no interest in novels and books, but I grabbed it up because I did not want to be humiliated in facing this goddamn cop. And so I just started reading from page one in the car as he drove me. And, and he got me to the police station. He put me on the bench. They were going to book me and everything. I just kept reading. And what happened is I was just reading me mechanically through the words, just the words, just to keep my mind off this crazy thing that was happening. And all of a sudden, something exploded in my mind. I came upon a sentence that had so much meaning for me. And I couldn't believe it. It's like my whole life was wrong. And this sentence was telling me what was right, huh. what I should be doing. And I went to the front of, of the novel to see what in the hell I was reading. And it was, it was a book by E.M. Forster called Howard's Inn. It was a novel, Howard's Inn by E.M. Forster. Yeah. And, um, it changed my life and when it, my, my girlfriend came with the, um, she came with the license to please let me go. And as we drove home, I told her, her name was Julie. I said, Julie, I said, I don't wanna be a scientist. I wanna be a writer. And that's the moment it changed my life. And I went on, I got my PhD, even though I didn't intend to pursue it. I got a job as a biology professor in a little college across the river in New York so I could stay in New York and be a writer. And um, I really wasn't good at, a, at being a writer. And um, finally I left that job and I just worked as a waiter and I wanted to spend all my time working with dreams so I could get into my creativity. That's how I got into that. That's how that happened. And then I also got into meditation. I got into meditation in order to discover myself so I could have something to write about. And so I took a backward path. Most people, if they want to be a writer, they take a writing course. 
I was stupid. I didn't. I took these things, but I'm glad I did. I, like you, all the time I wasted was valuable for me. We each approach it in our own way. That was my way to, yeah. to, be, to, to work with dreams and to, be, to meditate. And the two of them went together. I came to see that the two of them were the same thing. It's about discovering, discovering that mystery. It's the same thing that your art is about. And we all come to it a different way. And when we get there, those of us that are real, we may not be famous. People don't know who we are. No. We don't have, we aren't, we, I mean, we aren't rich, we are, but, we, but we got to the place. Do you know what I mean? We got to the mystery. Well, uh, you know, I, 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 bel I have a belief now that uh, as far as the dream world is concerned, you are kind of one of the, one of the top guys. I don't think anybody would say that, you know. Um, I, I do my work here in Taiwan. I'm far away from everybody else. Now I have this in, an international dream group because of the virus came along and we couldn't meet him in our the tea house we used to meet. We couldn't meet in person anymore. So we went online and immediately the people from around the world who used to be in Taiwan connected with me and they all wanted to be in the group. And so we have a good international dream group. That's all I do. And I write. I write about this. I'm not a big wick. My books, no, no, no publishing company accepted my books. I had to publish them on Amazon. And uh, I wish I knew what you know about publishing and about everything. I had the a horrible time getting it finished and I'm just in the process of getting the final ebook out um, I'm not widely known and um, my books are self-published and I don't think that many people have really read them to tell you the truth they're probably not going to read them but but the thing is that they're there and I figure yeah it's somebody will find them and it'll carry something on who knows that's our yeah. job is just to do our work not to become famous. Uh, well, we, we, we shall see. You still got plenty of uh, a time to go. Uh, so you, you know, you're not running out of, it doesn't look like you're running out of time. It looks like this lifestyle that you've, um, uh, you took on 40 or 50 years ago is, has uh, been a pretty healthy one for you. Um, well, I did all the mistakes that all the mistakes you made. I did them too. Drinking, drugs, all that stuff. Wild disco dancing. Every I tried everything, and um, in the end, right now, all I do is coffee. I found yeah. that I, I don't. It doesn't. None of that stuff works for me. None of it. I just no. don't. Um, I, I don't want to alter my consciousness. I'm happy with the way it is. You know. I like meditation. I gave up meditation when I was publishing these two books. And I went back a, a, a few weeks ago to do it again and I could hardly bend myself. And um, now I do it every morning, yoga and meditation. That's what I used to do for years and years and years in New York. Whenever anything was wrong, I would always heal it with yoga and meditation. So and how, I, old, how, old, how old are you, Bill? I'm in my 70s now, I'm around 75, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. old, I'm okay. actually pretty old. If that, if that virus comes along, I'm the kind of person that it hits. You'll so, be fine. You'll be fine. My dad uh, is uh, nine, 91, and uh, and he's and he's doing fine. So uh, I think that some of the stuff that you've written about um, the the images, um, there's there's one here called uh, Magic Calendar, and um, it talks about that um, back then the calendar had to have a center to be real. Nobody knew, nobody then ever doubted but what the center would hold or that time moved in a circle. It went in this direction, then later continued around in that opposite direction. And um, you know, you go on to say um, that um, I'm certainly no savant and can't pretend to know something so recondite, but my guess is as good as anyone's. I can only imagine that others are like me and that when they sink themselves into this colorful confusion, what strikes them is how it achieves its enormous beauty without needing to have a direction to go in. And uh, so, um, you know, that's that's a lot more than than some of the comments that I get on Facebook, which are 
this is nice. Um, it, uh, it moves me, but I don't know why. Uh, what is it about? And it about? My, my stock response is, uh, what is it about for you? You know, the same thing Van Morrison said about some of his tricky lyrics, that it doesn't matter what he thinks about it, that it matters more uh, what the listener thinks about it and the feelings that they get when they listen to it. Well, what is it about is the wrong question. Let's say with a dream. People, you tell a dream, what's it about? It's, the question is, um, th that's the wrong question. Because, yeah. Um, yeah. what, I, I, I had it a second ago, but I lost it. Did this, um, I understand. it's not that, yeah. this, this is quite a piece you produce. I have it on my screen here before me. It's quite, quite an incredible piece. It's incredible that someone could produce something like this with the color and the, the, the movement, the confusion, the, the variety. You move from one, one, one aspect to a different aspect. There's a dynamic here. It's like Moses in that, that statue of Moses in motion that Freud saw. Yeah. That's, what, that's what the works are like. And so they do say something. And um, I don't have that piece about the calendar before me, but I suddenly realize this piece is a mandala and it seems crazy um did you have the piece to show be to show people because uh, i don't know how to do it here with the, uh, i'm very not very i'm new at this I'm, I'm not very good at um zoom uh that i i probably don't have that particular okay, it's okay. Piece, it's okay. I, but i did want to show you that um you know this is a uh a google book hold, hold and, it closer uh, hold it closer so we can see it no, close right in the middle. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's something wow. else. Okay. So this is um, a book that uh, is about ten by ten, and it's a hard hard bound. And inside of it, there are about a hundred printed images. Hold it away, a little away, far away. You know, this is um, th this is your book. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. And how, what, yeah. what is a Google book? Well, you can take any photo. You can go on Google if you use Google Photos. And uh, there's an option where you can buy this book and you can put any pictures in it that you want to. And uh, so I put uh, this one I did last year and it was all of the uh, 2019 images. And uh, I, I now really want to do a, a, a book with uh, the 14 images that you commented on um, and wrote about and maybe get a few more that are, that are uh, uh, written about um, and put them in a book. Uh, I also, th these images also can be, uh, you know, you see them on the computer, but they're easily uh printed onto canvas wow and, uh, and, uh, That's and amazing. Can, can be done in a pretty large format i've done it up to 30 inches by 40 inches kind of the, the size of uh this piece well I, i'll tell you what i mean i'm involved with the book now but i'd be very interested in doing doing that with you together if you want to we'd have to pick which ones um how many would you include? Well, I've, 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 I've already got, you know, I, need, I want enough. And so by the time I do that uh, and put a few extras in, I've probably got enough already, Bill, to do, to do what I am after. Uh, I think that I'd, I'd certainly send it to you for approval and uh, proofread, uh, whatever. I uh, wanted, would want to make sure that uh, uh, it's, uh, you know that you're happy with it, um, but I I feel like it's all ready to go now. Well, I I feel there's something to be said. Like I said, there's something to be said about your art, and I could I could write an introduction if you're interested. There you go. I mean, I I printed everything that you wrote, and uh, plus my images, with as a first draft, Isn't that and it's, it's already. Uh, 30 pages long. Well, we could do that, but I think you should make the images full page. So I really okay, think yeah. that 
A person has to, like when you showed those images a minute ago, anybody else looking at this video, they can't really get a picture of your art. It really, you really have to look at it. Yeah. You have to look at it close in a certain way. People yeah, should go on to right. that. Um, it's, it's really, there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of detail to it, and it looks like it took forever, but I can assure you, <laughs> I didn't, I, you know, I've used 50 years of experience to, to make sure that I can do something that looks like it took 10 days to do, but it only took 10 minutes. What I'd like to, what I'd like to ask you before we go, because we've got to go, I, we could do another video. Um, I want to, um, Could you tell us something about the, the, the way you, the pattern, the way you work? You say you only work a few hours a day. Is that in the morning or at night? And do really, you want to say anything about that? Um, there's no particular time of the day that I do it. I generally, uh, you know, it's all, all of the work is done on my phone. And uh, so I'll, I'll generally uh, either recline on a, a nice uh, recliner that I have or lay down in bed. You know, at night when I'm watching TV, if I'm not focused on the TV show, I can, I can be doing this. And I, I, um, I have some questions. You sent a wonderful email. And one thing you said is the exciting, exciting moment for me is the decision to start a new image. Do you want yeah. to say anything about that? Well, that's uh, that's the beginning, and um, without the start, um, you know, it it, not, it it doesn't happen, and it's very easy to put the start off, and then it just doesn't happen, and then and then you get um, uh, afraid to do it. It's like in your writing, uh, you have you have a statement that you say. Um, that is that is similar to what I do. You know, you you can write about anything. All you have got to do is get started. And you know, the, the same it's the same thing with me, except that um, I don't I don't really know where I'm heading. I don't think you know where you're heading either. Sometimes. I never, never do. I don't. Okay. I don't know where I'm heading. You're right. But see, this is a, this is the point. The Chinese is saying that ancient two or three thousand years ago, the longest journey started with a single step. Yeah. That's what you're talking about, that, 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 yeah. that, that, that function. And you said something here in the same email. I have learned how to be able to start. And then you said, as soon, this is the part that gets me, as soon as the conscious decision to start is achieved, achieved, I'm sorry, as soon as the conscious decision to start is acted on, the actions begin to be something that is not conscious. Certainly yeah. not deliberate. That, that's the fascinating thing. That's the mystery, you see. I mean, that's yeah. a clue that you and I are doing the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's dreamlike. It's definitely dreamlike. It's creativity. Uh, this is, you're talking about creativity here. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. You, you start out and you don't know where it's going to lead you. Yes. It yeah, goes in its own direction. Something else is working through you, in other words. I believe so. I believe so. Yes. It's very... And then you say, I started, and as you mentioned, the process then becomes like that of creating a mandala. I become relaxed and begin with no objective, no subject matter, no design, no pattern, no color. Now I'm not really consciously pursuing anything, and I am not being deliberate. I am more interested in the journey than the destination. Yeah. I mean, you're telling us something very profound that that's, that could come out of Lao Tzu or Chuang Tzu, the ancient Chinese masters, or a Zen master, you know, or a, a great, you're telling us something very true. Well, maybe it's good that you're pulling some of this writing out of me. Um, well, you're you saying know. you're not a good writer, but I find you're a good writer. Well, I, I would like to see this in the book, by the way, these, these, these words. Yeah, you know? yeah, well, uh, I think that, that that may be a... A, a good idea. Maybe it would be helpful to some people. That's good. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think and I, and I want to do. I want to do more more writing. And uh, some of the things you have written about writing uh, cause me to be less self conscious about it and forget that I don't have a you know terrific vocabulary. I I can look words up as good as anybody. Vocabulary is not necessary. You know. You know English. 
that's, that's all. Don't worry about it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, if, if the thing is, if 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 you start you if you start pursuing writing in the way you're pursuing your artwork, nobody will be better than you, especially because you're writing about what you know. And yeah. the thing is, you're not writing because you know what you're going to say. You're writing to see what comes out. That's right. You know? That's, that's so we that's don't have right. to claim to be wise or enlightened. We see what comes out. We come to yeah. the other something on the other side is enlightened, not us. You know, yeah. but we can be anyway. And you, this is a, another sentence I like. I erase a lot. I see a pattern I like and a color I like, and begin erasing lines and colors that are not right. <laughs> the image process becomes a dreamlike meditative state. You, you, you. You're involved. You're involved in the dialogue with with the, with the other side. There, there's destruction there. Uh, actually, I've, I've created something, and now I want to erase it, dis destroy it, uh, oh, no. to bring it's, out to bring no. out the pieces that I like. What it is is what you've done is in order to get to where, where you like, you had to go through this other stuff, and then when you get there, it's so pure and vibrant. You, you just erase that other stuff. It gets in the way. Yeah. That's what happens. I'm sure, Bill, I'm sure you do the same thing. You'll write That's 10 pages and you'll say, this paragraph has got to go. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and we're doing the same thing. Um, then you say something. You say something. I'm not interested in selling the images. It's too much trouble and takes time away from the creative end. I, I, all in all, I really like this email. And I think this, just copy this email out and, and make this the beginning. You could write your own introduction. You don't need me. I'll add something too if you want, but but I I think you have something. Now I think we have to end soon because this is going to be too long. Okay, um, too very long good. Author. But I would well, like to continue in the future, make another video. Is that okay? It is. I'd love to do that uh, on your schedule. I'm retired, and you're still working on a book and uh, at a university, and uh, so. Uh, we'll keep in touch via email and Facebook, and then when you want to do another video, uh, whenever it is, I'd be happy and very pleased to do it. Um, is there anything else you want to say before you close out? Uh, I uh, let's see. I don't. Um, I don't think so. Um, of course, okay. I want to know more. I want to know more about you, but uh, we could. We could do I'm that sometime. Questions. We could do that sometime and not even record it. Okay, but we'll also we'll have another video because I think this is a fruitful conversation. I do too. Is that okay with you? Yes. Yes. Thank um, you. So I'm going to end it now. Okay. Okay. Thank and you, Bill. It's it been a pleasure. It was really a pleasure meeting you. Yes. Yes. Be careful over there. Okay, Be bye. safe.